In the last video, I destroyed a really cool looking miniature that left me with a lot of really cool bits. In this video, I want to grab those bits and make something really awesome, but at the same time, try my best to actually make a marshal that is better than the one I destroyed. And these are the awesome bits I was talking about. Primarily, this awesome backpack with a really cool, I presume, a holy relic. A combi bolter, which is not something that you see typically in Primaris. And this leftover sword that also looks really cool. And for the body, I'll be using this Crusader body that I just finished ripping the paint off. Next up, I really gotta fix some of these parts. Ripping off this backpack left with a weird texture that I need to scrape off first. And to fix it, we'll need sprue goo. I had to do quite a large amount of filling as unfortunately when I ripped off the backpack, some of the backpack was actually left on the model. And the most difficult part about it is the fact that I'm lacking the peg that usually connects the backpack to the body, and I tried using a little bit too much force, and I sort of broke it off. And I thought I was an idiot, however, apparently Games Workshop made the exact same mistake. Next up, I took out my box of magical bits and started to go through it, looking for different parts that I could use in this kit bash just to make it even more awesome. And after looking through it for about 10 to 15 minutes, I was left with these really awesome parts that I wanted to try out. And I was very tempted to try and use this sword. However, I landed instead on this sheath sword, this very odd looking purity seal, then some helmetless options because why not? and also this very odd looking scroll that I actually no clue where that's from. Next up, I had to get rid of the exact same weird noodly stuff that was left in the arm. And after the necessary adjustments, I made sure that the arm would actually fit and scraped off a tiny bit more just to give it a nice flush fit. Next up, I found this really cool intercessor arm that I thought just worked really wonderful for this model. My original idea was to position it downwards, however, I quickly realized that that's unfortunately not going to be possible. As when I started putting on the sword, I realized that the arm was getting in the way, so I had to slowly, bit by bit, nudge it upwards until I was finally able to put it in there. And I decided to use a bit of sprue goo just to make sure that this sword would actually hold in place and not fall off later on. And even though I thought I made the adjustments for the arm, I still had to slightly push it out of the way. Luckily, the plastics wasn't set yet, so I was able to do it quite easily. And just to be on the safe side, I decided to use even more spur goo just to make sure that sword is never going anywhere. And I was a bit worried that it was a bit too large for this model, however, after putting it on, I just think it looks really cool. And as I was getting ready to use one of the heads I found previously, I picked up the Black Templar upgrade sprue and noticed a very familiar martial looking face that will literally be absolutely perfect for this model. For the shoulder pad, I decided to go for the Sword Brethren one, and when I put on the shoulder pad, I'll be honest, I did not expect it to actually fit, however, to my pleasant surprise, it went on like a charm. And at first, it was a little bit wobbly, however, after a little bit of adjusting, it became perfect. When attaching the head, I did consider making him look either directly at the watch or the other side entirely, however, I felt like a mix between those two, sort of as if he's glancing at the watch, would give a much more interesting look. And then I pulled out these weird purity seals and started to figure out where I could possibly try and put them on the model. And the model was so incredibly busy and just had so much going on, I genuinely just could not find any place where I feel like this purity seal would not just feel entirely out of place. At least I couldn't find any area that I thought would work, so instead I dropped it. Now for the base, I'll be using some milliput stuff, and well, frankly, my fingers in the back of my X-Acto knife. Now, after the video was done, I did order some of these sculpting tools that I want to try to experiment with a little bit further, but for now, let's do some finger sculpting. I wasn't quite certain how much milliput I would actually need for this base, so I think I ended up mixing a little bit too much. As I don't have much experience sculpting bases with milliput, I essentially used my thumb to create a little hole, then using the back of my X-Acto knife, I've started to sculpt some of these areas that I thought would create a much more natural looking earth indentation. Then grabbed one of my destroyed boys and shoved them in there. And my idea behind this is, as we know, orcs are born from spores underneath the ground, so this guy is literally coming out of the ground as the Black Templar is stumping on him. And it also felt like it would be pretty iconic to have an orc on a Black Templar base. Once the milliput was set, I started to scrape off a tiny amount of the shoulder where I thought his foot would be standing. Next up, I used Tamiya Thin Cement for one foot and Super Glue for the other one, positioning him in a way that would look really cool and also have this heroic theme behind it. And as always, I just can't help myself, so I used a little bit of sprue goo just to try to make that foot stand there a little bit firmer. After playing a bit with milliput, 
I just think this base looks really cool and it makes me really want to try to make a diorama, maybe even for the next video. So who knows? And for the paint job, I'm going to go for the something very similar to the last video. However, at the same time, I want to try a different style while remaining very consistent in the colors to the previous ones so they don't look mismatched. I started off with the orc, just going through all the basic green colors, working up to the AK frog green that I personally associate with orcs. Afterwards, washing with some plague bear flesh. I moved on to the tabard, for which I decided to go with a red color. Similar to what I've previously seen on Grimaldus, which I think looks really cool and has this really elite status behind it. Also, the general theme I'm going for this miniature is definitely a very dark grim look, so I'm trying to avoid using any of the bright white or any of the cream colors either. Not to mention, I personally just enjoy painting without those colors, frankly much more, and if I can avoid it, I'd rather do it. For the tabard, I started with black red and then transitioned to some of the deep red mixed with the black red and then glazed over some of the details. And then I originally did think to use a checkered pattern. However, later on, I'll actually be changing that and doing so much more of a traditional highlight. For the black color, I did try my best to leave as much of the area in pure black as I possibly can. However, I did start to slowly mix in a little bit of white into my black to create the highlights with every single layer adding in just a little bit more white. And for the texture of the armor, similar to the previous video, I decided to go for a much more chaotic look. However, I highlighted him in a sort of a different manner, using a different volumetric idea for the light as if it's hitting more from the front rather than just generally and very diffused. So as I started working the highlights, I started to treat each piece of armor as its own cylinder, highlighting essentially the peak of it rather than more of a general aesthetic behind it. Also doing a tiny amount of edge highlighting in some of the areas just to make the armor pop a little bit more as I was leaving a lot more of the details in black rather than doing any highlighting to them. And as always, I'm also making the colors slightly brighter than previously as I want to use a wash later on just to have the same color as my other black Templar. Adding a little bit of more white and beginning to create much more of these interesting highlight points that I think help to create an idea that this armor has sort of a reflective quality behind it. Similar to non-metallic metal, but not quite there yet. As even my white still has a little bit of black in it and it doesn't really reach that pure white color. And for my last color, I essentially created these tiny little white dots that help create the idea of once again having a very reflective armor. For the leather, I basically took a very dark umber color, mixed in a little bit more of yellow, and then transitioned all the way up to a yellow color. When I got all the way to the pure yellow, I then afterwards added just a tiny amount of white, as once again, I'll be using a wash afterwards, so I need these colors to be slightly brighter. Then I just added a tiny bit more details to the tabard that I thought would make a bit more interesting. And this was the most frustrating part of them all, the face. In the previous miniature, I actually had a really easy time painting the face, and it was a quite an enjoyable process. However, in this one, it was a very frustrating one, and it was mainly due to the fact that that little tiara was just blocking very large portions of the head, and I had a very difficult time getting into some of those details. I still did my best to create some of these textured highlights just to give it a bit more of a skin textured look, rather than just like a basic doll that's entirely smooth. Afterwards, painting the red lens in his eye. I used pure black to essentially color up his tiara, I have no clue what this thing is actually called, and this part was very frustrating and actually took me quite a bit of time. I then cleaned up some of the little areas where I actually managed to get some of that Bugman Glow color into. Afterwards, I realized I entirely forgot to drill out his barrel, so I had to take care of that first. Otherwise, this marshal cannot shoot his gun and it's going to be very ineffective against those orcs. I also began to paint his bracelet watch, however, unfortunately, it's very difficult to get on the camera, so this is the progress I have so far. I then used a little bit of green to essentially begin creating an idea of an OSL effect for this watch. It's going to be very faint and not very easy to spot, especially when looking for the front, but I just thought it was a really cool detail and I really enjoyed making it. So I used some gunmetal gray just to cover up all the metallic areas. And even though for the most part this was quite easy, when I got to that tiara again, it was once again extremely frustrating as I had to spend so much time making sure I didn't get it onto the face. For my skeleton bone color, I decided to go for a very weird color choice. I started off by using a dark umber color, mixing in a bit of white and yellow into it, and then transitioning into a bright color. And the reason I went for this very odd choice is I wanted to provide some texture for the skeleton before I use a contrast paint on top of it. And afterwards, grabbing the Agrax Dunes is what I think this contrast paint is called, and creating this very interesting orange bone color. Which I recently found out, skeletons can actually come in a variety of colors, but I really think this one just 
pops in the model really well. Afterwards, painting up all the different gold colors on the miniature. Using my favorite gold mixture, which is Green Stuff World Antique Gold Pigment, mixed with Vallejo Metal Color Gold. I also realized I forgot to paint his shoulders red, so instead, I decided to give him a gold trim, and I think it actually worked out even better. I applied my wash with a lot of flow improver. It acts much more like a tint than a typical wash. And I decided, you know what, this orc deserves a little bit of a wash as well. I came back with a little bit of red just to finish up some of those details. And now that the marshal's done, it's time to see the final result. 